Morning, everybody. How's everyone doing? I hope well. I hope well in spite of. Uh, as you all know, my name is Major Bay, and today is our YouTube Bible study. Um, if you get a chance, please like, share, and subscribe to my channel. Share the video, push the word out there. Uh, I want to say thank you to everybody that has supported thus far. Thank you for your comments and your feedback and your phone calls. Uh, but today, today I have something special. Uh, it's a scripture that or a passage of scripture that we're all familiar with and we've heard and we know the story. But as I was reading, I found something that I, I guess I overlooked or maybe today was the day that I was supposed to find it. So. Uh, here we are, 1 Samuel chapter 17, the story of David and Goliath. And, and, and I mean, we learned this in church when we were kids. It was, you know, always fascinating about how the little boy defeated the big giant. But there are so many different things in this passage of scripture, 1 Samuel chapter 17 that, that uh, speak to me and today. So uh, I'm not going to read the whole story. I'm going to tell you the story and then I'm going to go over the passage of scripture that stood out to me. So uh, let's pray. Dear God, we say thank you. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this ordained moment, God. Thank you for all the trials and the tribulations that we've all had to endure to come here to this moment. Pray now, God, that the spirit of the living God would fall afresh upon me and that you would speak to me and through me to this, your people. Do it for your glory. Do it for your praise. Do it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and jump go right to the verse that I want to point out. And it's just a few verses, um, but let's start at verse 37. Verse 37. Moreover, David said, the Lord who delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the paw of the bear, he will deliver me from the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. Here it is right here. Verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor and he put a bronze helmet on his head and he clothed him with a coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these, for I have not tested them. So David took them off. Man, wow. Um, I just want to jump right in right there. Just like, take it off. It don't belong to you. All right. <laughs> Uh, so let, let's let's paint the picture. So here you have in First Samuel, you have a, a, a battle between the the Israelites and the Philistines, and and this this fight has been going on uh, for quite some time. Uh, and 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 the, and what they used to do in ancient times is instead of having uh, whole armies go to battle and go to war and it'd be a bunch of losses. They would just pick a champion from each side and whoever won that fight, that duel, that's who determined the results of the war. Um, I hope this is speaking to somebody. I really do. So, so here we have, uh, the Philistine army. The Philistine has had a champion named Goliath. Goliath was a giant. He was huge. The scripture describes him very big and very loud, very arrogant, very prideful because nobody had ever defeated Goliath. So when Goliath came out to the forefront of the battlefield, he immediately began to bang on his shield like, who won it? Come get it. Because I got it. Who won it? <laughs> I'm just having fun. So none of the Israelites had the faith to go out there and say, me. They all kind of sat back watching Goliath taunt and 
provoke and mock God, more or less. And none of them, none of it was almost like they were paralyzed and stuck in fear of losing, fear of embarrassment, of falling, fear of, I guess, just overall misrepresenting their squad. Am I talking to anybody? So, so here about what's going on, about what's going on, you know, message gets through the, to the camp and, and little young shepherd boy, David gets wind of what's going on on the battlefield. And when he gets wind of what's going on on the battlefield, he immediately makes his way and runs down to the battlefield because his faith, oh man, was talking to him the whole time. How many of us know without a shadow of a doubt who God is? How many, how many of us know that no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what the doctor told you, God's word is ultimately the final word. All right, so I'm, I'm, I, I'm not going to jump on that. One. Excuse me for a minute. <laughs> so when David finds out what's going on, he makes his way to the battlefield. Now, he had brothers and his dad and his family members who were a part of the Israelite army who were down there. And more or less, they looking at him like, what you doing here? You, 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 you don't belong here. This ain't your thing. You're supposed to be fighting off foxes and, and, and badgers or whatever else may be out there trying to, to, to capture the sheep. You're supposed to be protecting the sheep. This is, this is, this is the big boy league over here. Like you ain't got no business over here. I don't, I don't even know why you're here, but David insisted. That he be heard. He was not afraid to speak up. He was he was not afraid to let them know that his God was the true and living God. And I can't believe that y'all sitting back letting this prideful, arrogant, boastful giant mock our God. So so David came prepared for battle. Yeah, he did. And they, 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 you know, of course, naturally, and we've been in this situation before where people don't necessarily, you don't, you don't have enough credit with people. You don't, you don't have enough uh, uh, experience. So, so they doubt your ability, but the whole time God is feeding to you or feeding to David in this particular situation, that victory was his no matter what. And sometimes we got to wake up with the mindset and the attitude that victory is mine no matter what. Victory is mine, no matter what they say, because the word of God declares that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to their, his purpose. So if you wake up with that mind frame, if you have that mind frame and that attitude that my faith will supersede my circumstance, then you will be victorious. So that's the type of attitude that David had. So David made his way to the king and, and he told the king, let, pretty, I'm, I'm paraphrasing and I'm telling you, go back and read it. First Samuel chapter 17. He, I, I, I'm ready for this. I was born for this. I was, I was built for this. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I, I, I know, I know my resume don't have no experience on it whatsoever, but I'm telling you, my purpose is, is to do this thing right here, this moment. And it was in that moment that Saul was inspired by David's fervor. And then we get to verse 38. So Saul clothed David with his armor. He gave him his helmet. And you got to imagine Saul was the king. So this was the best helmet out there. This was the best shield out here. This was the best breastplate, the best shoes, the best sword. I mean, he had the best of the best, but that's not what God designed for David. Think about that for a second while I catch my breath. You, you, you ever have people try to force their opinions onto you to the point that, that you believe in what it is that they're saying, but even though what they're saying 
doesn't fit your circumstance or your situation, take it off. <laughs> I was waiting to do that. I, I was. I was. I was waiting for that. You cannot be successful wearing somebody else's armor in life. I, I appreciate the opinions. I, I, I appreciate the concerns. I, I appreciate input from people when it comes to certain things in my life. But when it comes time for war, the only voice that I adhere to, the only voice that I listen to is the voice of God. Why? Because he knows my today. He knows my tomorrow. He knows my yesterday and he knows my capabilities and all of the promises of my life rest in God. Not in my friend, not in your opinions, not in your opinions abilities, but in the ability of God. Yeah, I like that. The power of God is always in your belief system. The power of God is always in your belief system. So you have to ask yourself, what are you believing for? Let's, let's get back to David. David fastened his sword to his armor and try, he tried to walk. You stumble at Right now, because you try to walk in somebody else's shoes, you trying to operate in somebody else's gift, you trying to manifest things that God promised you, but you have yet to take your place. Some of us are weighed down with years of opinions, years of pain, but we have not been able to take a new perspective and open our eyes and see all we need is what God gave us. All I need is that iPhone 12 to shoot a video and get the word out there so that somebody else can be blessed. I don't have to do it like everybody else. I don't have to sound like everybody else, but I'm going to do what God told me to do in order for you to be blessed. And I'll let him worry about the results. You cannot operate in other people and be successful in any degree. You have to operate in you. You have to become secure in you. You have to become strong in you. You have to believe in you even when it's not believable because the power of God is in your belief system. David, David understood in that moment that if he went into the battlefield ready to fight this giant, here's David, here's the giant, and he was equipped with things that people gave him and people told him and told him how to move and how to maneuver and the little tricks with your sword that he would be defeated because that's not who he was when he showed up with the fervor of God ready to defeat the enemy. All he had was a slingshot and a stick and a little bag. Oh, come on. <laughs> okay, I want to address that right here for a minute. Sometimes we overthink what God is doing. You heard me. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we think that we need a certain amount of money in the bank to, to get this business started. Sometimes we believe that we need to, to, to have a certain amount of credentials. And, and, and I'm not dissing it because go get your credentials. But, but sometimes all you need is a decent belief system. That's it. That's it. You don't need nobody to validate you in any capacity whatsoever because you were validated when God birthed you. Ah, all right, next page. Here we have David, a shepherd boy. No experience at war or combat of any kind. Faith will elevate your steps in life. Faith will open doors that you don't qualify for. I've been there. I've had jobs. I didn't ain't, I ain't, I ain't even know how I got there. I'm not even going to get into that. Faith will open doors that you don't qualify for, according to man. But, qualify, but God qualified you when you were born. Your enemy will pick at you and taunt at you because he wants to make you believe that you can't 
succeed. The enemy will talk at you because he wants you to believe that you cannot succeed. But determination and faith will determine your overall outcome. All right, so let me let me let me finish this up. Faith. So then David took his staff in his hand and chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the shepherd's bag and in the pouch which he had his sling. And uh, his sling was in his hand and drew and he drew near to the Philistine. And check this out, verse 44. And the Philistine, Philistine said to David, come to me and I will give your flesh to the birds of the air and to the beasts of the field. This, this, this is an impossible situation. How is this little shepherd boy going to defeat this giant? How is this person with no experience going to create a turnaround? How, how is this situation? I got, I got $2 in my pocket. I don't have $2, but I got $2 in my pocket, right? But, but, but what I need over there costs half a million dollars. My faith tells me uh-huh, no, 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 don't get it twisted. You still got to do, yes, sir. You still got to do your work, but the number will get in. My faith tells me that doors will open, that unlimited possibilities will come about in spite of what it looks like. We get so hung up and caught up in the negative and what's going on and what's going wrong. If I told you about how I've been under attack all week, but yet I'm still excited about God, you wouldn't believe me. You wouldn't believe me. You wouldn't believe at all that I take the stance that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. You don't even understand how the enemy been trying to take me out. Body be hurting. Somebody hit my car yesterday. All of a sudden, I ain't even get mad. Ain't nobody died. Give me your insurance information. Have a good day because no weapon formed against me shall prosper. All right, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting sidetracked. Then David said to the Philistine, you come to me with your sword with your spear and with your javelin. But I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, who you have defied. In other words, my God is awesome. Yeah, and all I need is his name. All, all I need is to say in the name of Jesus and every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that he is Lord. Yeah, yeah. So that David knew David had a plan of faith and he knew his belief exceeded the situation. He knew that he was victorious before he got there. How many of us wake up with victorious mindsets and attitudes? Thank you, Jesus. Whew. And it was at that moment that the transition took place. Yeah, yeah, it was it was at that moment that no, that 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 the loud, boasting, antagonizing, well-known enemy that has conquered and defeated people that were stronger than David, that, that were mightier than David, that, that were swifter with the sword. They, they had skills, more or less. They, they knew how to box. They knew how to get it in, but, but they fell to Goliath. But this young shepherd boy had faith, and the faith gave him the authority, and the authority gave him the victory. Oh, uh, wait, wait. What did he say? I said he gave him the victory. You got to have a mindset and an attitude of authority that God is for you. That no matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like, no matter what they tell you, and no matter what the opinions are of other people, that God is your source. God is your strength. God is your shield. Am I, am I talking to anybody today? Whew. Whew. Verse 46. <laughs> this day, the Lord will deliver you into my hand and I will strike you and take your head from your body. Wait a minute. He, he didn't just say, I'm a, I'm a stab you. I'm a, I'm a, I'm just going to beat you up real bad. No, I'm taking your head because my God is greater than my circumstance. So yeah, you may be standing over there taunting, talking trash, running your mouth. <laughs> But if I hold my peace and let the Lord fight my battles, then victory is mine. Then the verse 
48. So it was when the Philistine arose and came and drew near to meet David that David hurried and ran toward the army to meet the Philistine. Wait a minute. So you tell me that this seven, I'm just going to you know, read it, but I'm giving you, a, I guess, a way to look at it. That this eight foot tall, seven foot tall giant pulled his sword out and started charging at David. David didn't back down. <laughs> David didn't run. David didn't pick up the phone and call his best friend or call his sister and ask them, what should he do? I don't know what to do. David immediately, come on, come on, started running towards the Philistine and the army. But, but, but see, they thought he was by himself. But the, the army of God was behind him, in front of him, on the left. And on the right, so victory is about to take place. Whew. Then David put his hand in his bag and took out a stone and he swung it and struck the Philistine in his forehead so that the stone sank into his forehead and he fell on his face to the earth. So David prevailed over the Philistine with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in the hand of David. Watch out. Therefore, David ran and stood over the Philistine, took his sword and drew it out of his sheath and killed him, cut off his head with it. And when the Philistines saw their champion was dead, they fled. Stop running from your fight. Stop running from your fight. You're not victorious yet because you ain't jumped in. You're not victorious yet because you ain't ran to, you ran from. I dare you to turn around and stand on faith and stand on the promises of God that you know. And if you don't know some promises of God, I need you to get in your word and get some promises of God. I need you to stand on them promises and I need you to believe that no matter what it looks like, no matter what they say, you will be victorious. Remember, y'all, God is our source, our strength, and our shield. I want to encourage you today to slay your giant. Prepare for battle. God bless everybody. Remember, like, share, subscribe. Make it a good day today on purpose.